Hi everybody, we're going to start today with a competition and it's a competition between me and you. I have got some wooden blocks and I am going to see how many I can balance on top of each other before they fall over. And then I'd like you to have a go at home with whatever type of blocks you might have. So here we go. There's our first one. Then we'll very carefully put on another one. We're going okay so far. And there's our third block. Oh, it's getting a little bit shaky now. Can we manage a fifth one? Oh, just about. Can we manage a sixth one? <gasps> no, we can't. Okay, my record was five. I'd like you to have a go and see how many you can balance. I would love to hear how you get on. Competitions can be great fun. Maybe you have been in a sporting competition, maybe running or swimming or playing football or hockey or some other type of sport. Maybe you've been in a music competition. There are lots and lots of different types of competitions that we can be involved in. In today's story, there is a competition but this is a very different type of competition. Last week we met King Solomon. He was a good king who followed God. He built the temple, the special place for the people to come and worship God. But then something really sad happened. King Solomon turned away from God. He disobeyed God and God's people did too. They turned away from God. They said no to God. They didn't want him as their king anymore. And God warned that the kingdom would be split in two. And after King Solomon died, that's exactly what happened. That kingdom was split into two parts. The kingdom of Israel and of Judah. The kingdom of Israel had no kings who followed God. God was angry. And he sent some special messengers called prophets to warn the people to stop disobeying him. One of those prophets was called Elijah. There was a very wicked king at that time called King Ahab. He didn't follow God. He disobeyed God. He worshipped a false god called Baal. Elijah asked King Ahab to go to the top of a high mountain called Mount Carmel and to bring all the people of Israel, and to bring 450 people who were false prophets of Baal, people who worshipped this idol or false god themselves. And when they were on the mountain, they would have a competition or a contest to see who the real, true God is. On that mountain, Elijah was the only one who worshipped God. I could imagine that that could have felt very, very lonely. I wonder if you ever feel that in your family or in your class or in your group of friends that you are the only one who follows God. Remember, God has promised that he will never leave you. Elijah knew that God was with him and that was better than having 1,000 people in his team. Elijah asked the people of Israel, why can you not make up your mind? If God is the true God, worship him. If Baal is the true God, worship him. So then they had the contest. Each group had to take a bull, set it down on some wood and then ask their God to send some fire. So the prophets of Baal and King Ahab went first. They took the wood, they laid down the bull and then they called on Baal to hear them. They shouted and they shouted and they shouted. They even jumped around. They asked Baal to send some fire. But by evening, nothing had happened. Why not? Because Baal was a false god. Baal couldn't see them. Baal couldn't hear them. Baal couldn't help them. Then it was Elijah's turn. Elijah took 12 stones and built an altar to set the bull on. He then dug a trench, a big hole around the stones. Then he did something very unusual. He poured water 
all over the stones, over the wood, over the bull, and it filled up the trench. Now, if you want something to be on fire, water's not going to be much good because water puts out fire. Elijah was actually making it more difficult. But Elijah prayed to God and Elijah said to God, Lord God, let it be known that you are the true God. Hear me so that the people will know that you are the only God. And with that, fire came down and burned up Elijah's sacrifice. The people were amazed. They fell down and they praised God and they said, yes, God is the only true God. Surely this would be enough for the people to be able to see that God is the one true God and the one that they should worship. But sadly, it wasn't long before they disobeyed God again. They had a king called Zedekiah who said, well, God promised that we would have this land forever. So it doesn't really matter what we do. But God sent another prophet or messenger who said, actually, that's not the way it works and warned the people to stop disobeying God. But they didn't listen. Another king came from a faraway land. He burned King Solomon's beautiful temple and he took God's people away. He took them captive. He took them off to a faraway land called Babylon. They had to leave God's special land. Does that remind you of another part of our story? When Adam and Eve had to leave God's beautiful garden forever because of their sin. Now God's people were having to leave the special promised land. But one day. God would send a rescuer to rescue his people from sin forever. Have you trusted Jesus to rescue you from sin? Are you making the one true God number one in your life today? Do you want to know what happened when the people were taken away to Babylon? Then come back next week to find out. <laughs>